Hello all. A very good morning to all the participants and my dear faculty members from all over the India and also from abroad. This is P. Zahir Alam Khan, Assistant Professor of Civil Engineering, Department of Civil Engineering from Gates Institute of Technology. And I welcome you all on board for the second day of five day faculty development program on emerging trends in civil engineering. Hope yesterday's session was very wonderful on topic HPC modeling using neural networks. And I hope everyone has gained some knowledge from that yesterday's session. So after the insightful session, today I'm very much honored to introduce our second day resource person, Mr. P. Srinivasulugaru to this FTP. So before handing over this session to Mr. P. Srinivasulugaru, I would like to brief a little on his experiences. So currently, sir, is he is having a total experience of 23 years in structural engineering and uh, offshore structures. He, sir, had his B.Tech from JNTU Hyderabad in 1994 and M.Tech from NIT Suratkal from Industrial Structures in 1997. Currently, Mr. Srinivasulgaro is working as a lead structural engineer in McDermott in Malaysia and previously in Singapore. So some of his previously held positions were, he worked as assistant engineer in Gammon India, senior engineer in Tata Chemicals, senior structural engineer in John Brown Engineers and assistant and, and senior structural engineer in Technip from Abu Dhabi. So now I take the honor to introduce our resource person, Mr. P. Srinivasul Garu, and I'll hand over this session to him to continue with his presentation. Sir, over to you. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you, Jahir. Thanks for the introduction. Hi. Uh, I don't think I need to repeat again that I'm my about my introduction. And uh, with this, I will straight away start my discussion about this introduction of subsystem structures. Let me share my screen. Hope everyone is getting my screen now. Uh, today I'm going to discuss about the introduction of offshore structures. The, the aim of this is uh, not for experienced people, but whoever is not aware of the offshore structures, this will help them to understand what is offshore structures and how what are all the things to be designed in the while designing the structures, etc. So overview is offshore platforms which will be used in uh, which will be used for exploration of oil and gas from uh, under seabed and processing. The first offshore platform, which is installed in 1947 in Luciana, in Luciana, which is where the water depth is only six meters. So today there are over 7,500. Of course, this figure is uh, way three years before. I don't know. Maybe it 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 would definitely it would, it would have increased today. So there are over 7,000 offshore, uh, 7,500 offshore platforms around this world in water depths, in water depths of up to 1850. But the topic, what we are going to discuss today, offshore stuck, offshore part, fixed offshore platforms. Fixed offshore platforms doesn't go up to 1,850 meters. Maximum range is, it goes feasibility wise up to 150 meters. Though there are some instances, I mean, in some cases, uh, they went up to 400 meters also. But nowadays, uh, based on the feasibility, usually they, go, they won't go beyond 150 meters. If it is a water depth is beyond 150 meters, they will go with some other type of structures, which I will explain to you in the next couple of slides. So this platform size depends on the facilities, what to be installed, like it is a wellhead, process, wellhead platform or process platform or living quarters with a helipad, etc. What is a wellhead platform? Is Wellhead is a, just a simple four-legged structure, four-legged uh, platform which will directly underneath the platform itself, it will collect the, it will explore the oil or gas, and then it will send directly to the onshore. Whereas process platform means it collects the oil and gas from remote wells, and it process on the platform itself, like a separation and compression, everything. And then it sends onto the, it will send onto the onshore via pipelines. 
subsea pipelines. And living quarters is a, just a living quarters to help the people, whoever is working on offshore platforms, it will be just a living quarters for them, which includes uh, not only living quarters, but also the offices like a control, control office and other mechanical workshops, et cetera, for any maintenance. And then uh, based on the classification of what, uh, water depth is classified into three types. Like if it is less than 350 meters, it is called, usually it's called as a shallow water and up to 1500 meters, it, it will be called as a deep water and it's more than 1500 meters, it's ultra deep water. So the overview here, these are the various types of uh, offshore platforms. Uh, some are fixed platforms. Fixed platforms means which will be extended up to the seabed like a steel jacket or concrete gravity structures or compliant towers. This, these things you can see on the left-hand side, first two are the fixed platforms, the fixed platform and compliant tower. These two, are, these two comes under the fixed structures. Whereas the other things like tension leg platform, mini tension leg platform, SPAR or floating production system or FPSO, floating production storage and offloading, these things comes under float, floating structures. This, they will float near the water surface. So today we are, we are not going to discuss, we are going to discuss only about the fixed offshore platforms, not the floating structures which are floating on the water, water level. So this is a typical fixed offshore platform. A uh, fixed offshore platform is a, like a space frame, space frame structure with a lot of tubular members supported with a piled foundations. These piles may be running through the jacket legs or through the, skirt, uh, through the skirts, which is attached at the bottom of the jacket. You can see in the sketch, skirt piles, pile cluster is there. So wherein the piles will be driven into the seabed. So this is a skirt pile option. And some other jackets, some jackets where the water depth is more, uh, where water depth is less and the jackets will be, sorry, the piles will be driven through the jacket legs also. And this will be used, as I mentioned before, these fixed steel platforms will be used for up to water depth of 150 meters. And the jacket provides a protective layer around the pipes. And typical offshore structure will have uh, top sides. Top sides are deck. I, I call it as a top sides are deck, whatever it is, which will be holding at two or three levels, like a cellar deck. Cellar means it's the bottommost. And one level below that is called as a spider deck, above sea deck, that is sea deck, or, sea deck or spider deck. And above that is a cellar deck. And over that is a process area, which we, be, we will be calling it as a main deck or process deck, something like that. So over that, we will be having a, some will have a accommodation and building derricks, pedestal cranes, flare booms, etc. So you can see in this picture also the risers Risers is uh, like uh, it will be collecting the crude oil, uh, oil and gas from uh, remote wells and it will transport onto the top sites where it will be get processed before sending through the same risers to the onshore, uh, onshore terminals for processing, for further processing and uh, product sellings, etc. You also can see a cluster of pile, cluster of pipes in the center of the jacket, which are called as a conductors. Conductors are the, which will be like, a, it will be, it is a wells, okay? It will be driven below the seabed up to reservoir. This, it may range up to 1.5 kilometers. So these conductors will be driven up to, uh, up to the reservoir depth, which may be usually around a kilometer or one and a half kilometer. And it will receive onto the process platform and where you will be having a Christmas trees on the top of platform, which will control uh, flow, which will be used to control the flow and any abnormal uh, shutdowns, etc. So moving on to the, so sorry, this here I need to introduce some more things. This mud mats, mud mats is just, uh, it is a temporary use before piling. So jacket, entire jacket will be supported on the mud mats. And once piles are installed through the jacket legs or through the pile cluster, the mud mat is uh, no significance, basically. So all the uh, jacket, essentially it provides the lateral stability for the piles because pile, if, if the water depth is 60 meters, we cannot have just piles. We need to have a, something to transfer to 
to resist the lateral loads. So this jacket is nothing but to, it is resisting the lateral loads. Lateral loads is caused by the wave and wind loads, which we will discuss in next slides. Jacket, this is uh, underwater. The piles connect contained inside, uh, inside the legs of the jacket structure. The jacket also serves as a template for the initial driving of the piles. That time there won't be any deck. So without deck, they will, after installing the jacket, they will, drive, they will drive the piles on all the four corners in a sequence. And 90% 90, 90 of the offshore platforms around the world are jacket sub, uh, pile supported, jacket supported. Here is the same slide again. And uh, just it shows in the left-hand side, if you see, this bottom portion is called as a jacket, which is within the sea. Just it will be elevated above the sea a little bit and which will support and top side. Top sides means we call it as a deck. deck uh, as I mentioned before, deck is a three or four levels of uh, three or four levels of the platforms, which entire thing is called as a deck. So you can also see that under the seafloor pilings inside the jacket legs. You can also see well conductors going inside up to the oil and gas reservoirs. So this is a typically about offshore fixed platform. Okay, while designing these offshore structures, we will be have, we'll be doing so many analysis. One is one condition is that during in service, that means once it is installed, what uh, it has to be designed for in service conditions. What is in service conditions is like operating loads combined with uh, environmental loads is an in service analysis. Operating loads again comes like a dead loads, dead loads mean dead loads, live loads, and then environmental loads. Another aspect in this in-service analysis is it is to be designed for seismic condition also. Seismic condition as uh, seismic condition also will be designed. And then uh, it, it, uh, the jacket should be designed for uh, fatigue, fatigue also. Because of the uh, waves, the jacket will be, uh, joints will be subjected to reversal of bending stresses. So because of that, the, all the joints to be designed for fatigue. Uh, one of the accidental condition is impact analysis. There is a chance that vessels coming near, uh, coming near to the jacket, there is a chance that it will hit the jacket also. So the jackets will be designed for impact analysis as also. So besides this main in-service analysis, we will have to do the many other analysis, which will be, I mean, like a installation uh, installations, like a loadout analysis. Loadout analysis means uh, I'll be going through those all the analysis maybe in the next couple of slides. So I will explain there in detail, but here I'll be just reading them out. One is a loadout, then transportation, then lift or launch into the sea, and then append in the sea, and then on bottom stability, that means the four piling, and then pile drivability while driving the piles. So these are the six analysis we need to perform as an installation engineering besides the uh, in service analysis. Okay, what are all the elements we need to be designed in the offshore structure and the offshore structures? These are pile capacities. First thing is we need to check the pile capacity. Whatever the pile it is driven in, whatever the pile driven, whether it has a pile sufficient pile capacity or not. That means, like suppose say it is a top side deck weight is around say ten thousand tons and jacket weight is say two thousand five hundred tons. So totally twelve thousand five hundred tons. This total 12,500 tons to resist that total uh, 12,500 tons, say we need how many piles and up to what penetration it requires to go. Basically, these piles will be resistance will come from negative skin friction and also end bearing, these two things. So the first thing is pile capacity. Second thing is the deflections. The deflection of the platform is a very important aspect which needs to be controlled. Then after that, giant design. Joint is the next critical because even a member failure by joint should be designed first. A member in a structure, a member may a member can fail you, but still the structure may be safe because that uh, that may be a redundant or maybe load path will differ. But if joint fails, nothing will stand. So that is a so joint is a joint design is the main thing. And after that, we will go to the member designs. And uh, last but not least important cathodic protection cathodic protection essence it is a corrosion corrosion protection design because inside the subsea for a life of 25 to 30 years 
So we need to design the structure for uh, erosion protection also. So the codes, what we use for the design of the fixed offshore platforms is a couple of standards I'm mentioning here, API, American Petroleum Institute, ISO, International Standard Organization, and uh, some recommendations, uh, guidelines from DNV, that, uh, DNV, and then NARSOC standards, Norwegian one, and then AISC standards. Design loads. Offshore structure shall be designed for the following type of the loads. One is a dead loads, as I mentioned before. Dead loads means the self weight of the structure, which is jacket and also top sides, entire structural weight. Then we will be having so many equipments on the top sides, like uh, compressors, generators, turbines, so many things will be there. Piping, electricals, electrical cables, instruments, instrumentation valves, instrumentation cables, like this, so many equipments will be there, which are all classified under permanent dead loads. Besides the permanent loads, then operating loads. Operating loads means it is a product like a fluids and any other temporary items, like a, when crane is lifting some object, that object will be a live load. So these kind of the, anything which is not permanent on the platform and temporarily, they will be called as a live loads. Then environmental loads. Environmental loads, uh, mainly wave and current loads is the predominant and then wind loads and earthquake loads. And uh, another loading is construction. During installation, during installation, there will be some different uh, different kind of loads like inertial loading, etc. Beside, and the load path will also change. So yeah, that is a, during construction, some other loads will be there. Installation loads, like inertial loads, which I will be explaining later in uh, transportation analysis slide. And then uh, accidental loads. Accidental loads means it is a boat impact. So boat impact means how it will be like a, a boat mass of 500, uh, 1500 tons coming with a one, one, one meter per second, uh, one meter or 0.5 meter per second velocity. And if how much energy it impacts while impacting, how much energy it comes and then for how much The weight of equipment, I think. Sir, your voice is not audible to us, sir. Sorry for the interruption. There was poor... Sorry, there was some network problem, so I could uh, rejoin. Are you okay now? Yes, sir, it is audible, sir. Thank yeah. you. So, uh, permanent dead load. This is a weight of equipment, which includes like a piping facilities, like offices, living quarters, and their associated structures permanently mounted on the platform. And hydrostatic forces on the members below the waterline. These forces include like a buoyancy, buoyancy force and hydrostatic pressures, etc. Buoyancy is a buoyancy is a not a downward load, it is an upward load because the jacket is made with the steel tubulars, which the uh, which 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 will create a lot of buoyancy. That means uh, Suppose say if uh, if you uh, if our dry weight of the jacket is a thousand tons and weight in submerged water is eight hundred and seventy tons, but you will be high if we, if we are since we are using the tubulars which will create the buoyancy, so it will further reduce the net downward load. So that is the reason that is one of the reason we use all the tubular uh, tubular members in the in designing these structures. Operating loads. Operating loads includes <coughs> the weight of all non-permanent equipment or material, as well as forces generated during operation of equipment, like uh, any turbine uh, or generators. Because of that, some dynamic loads will be coming in. Besides the fluid and uh, besides the fluid contents, or some equipments like uh, while drilling the platforms, some drilling uh, loads, production facilities, living quarters 
furnitures, life support uh, spools, life support systems, or helicopters, consumable supplies, liquids, all these things comes under live loads. And besides this, forces generated during operation like uh, rain lifting or helicopter landing or vessel moorings, drillings, all this also comes under operational live loads. Uh, third one is the environmental loads. Environmental loads is a uh, wave loads. This wave loads, uh, an offshore structure is usually the most important of all the environmental loads. The forces on the structure caused by the motion of the water due to the waves. So it is just motion of the water due to the waves. Maximum wave height with respect to time, maximum wave height will be used to design this, uh, to calculate the wave loads, which will be used for the respective time periods. Normally we design for two conditions. One is a one year operating conditions that is called as a normal operating conditions. Another one is a hundred year storm case, which is a abnormal uh, extreme storm conditions. One year operating conditions in the sense, maximum wave height, what need to be considered in that maximum year, in that one year, usual normal years. Hundred years case means it is a abnormally whatever happened in, the, in that region. So that will be used. Like if I would like to classify in our uh, Bay of Bengal or Arabia, the maximum wave height is 100 years case. The maximum wave height is around 18 meters, whereas the normal conditions, operating conditions, maximum wave height is around 8 meters. So you can see a lot of different uh, margin between 8 meters to 18 meters. It goes. So other than this uh, wave loads, there will, besides the wave loads, we will be having a current loads also to be considered. It will be combined with the wave loads because wave and current it comes together. Though there will be a small time difference, but it will be considered in both wave and current acting simultaneously. Besides these wave loads, then we will be having a wind loads. Wind loads act on the on the portion of the jacket which is above the sea, above the sea deck, above the sea, and then on entire top sides platform. So this is a wind loads. And then besides that, uh, seismic loads. Seismic loads is uh, inertial loads due to seismic condition, due to accelerations. This is a marine growth. <coughs> marine growth is a formation of uh, marine growth because of the marine algae and the structural uh, tubular members. You can see the algae formation here. So the weight, it is not creating any, it is not creating much of dead weight, but what it creates is it, it will increase the further the lateral loads. So like when wave, when when the platform is installed, all tubulars are clean, clean, which will not have any any marine growth, etc. So the wave loads will be lesser. And the surface is smoother, so coefficient of drag will be less. But after a few months or few years, when marine growth forms, marine growth may vary up, may vary in one of some of the incidents, it will go up to 15 centimeters also. So 15 centimeters means over the tubular, you are increasing 30 centimeters overall the diameter of the tubulars. Moreover that the surface itself is will become very rough. So the coefficient of drag will be increased for that. So, <coughs> so the wave loads will be increased because of this marine growth. <coughs> Usually this marine growth forms at the surface level it will be maximum at the surface level and especially in the splash zone area. And then while going down, it will be reducing it. If, if it is a shallow water, then it will not reduce much. But if it is a deep water, it will uh, the reduction will be significant. Because in deep waters, the oxygen, there won't be much of oxygen uh, rotation there. That is the reason uh, there won't be any marine growth. But at the sea level, there will be a lot of oxygen. So you can see that it is all at the sea level. So that's how the marine growth forms. Then I'm going through the installation loads. Installation loads, as I explained before, these are temporary loads arising during fabrication and installation of structures. During fabrication, we'll be uh, fabricating components wise, and then we will be lifting and uh, assembling together. So all these, all these uh, cases we need to consider while designing these structures. Installation phase, installation phase forces are generated during platforms like a loadout, transportation to the site, launching, appending, as well as liftings, all these things. 
all members and connections of a lifted components must be designed for the forces resulting from static equilibrium of the lifted weight of the lifted weight and the sling tensions so load out forces are generated when the jacket or top sides is loaded out from the fabrication yard onto the transportation barge it they depends on the type of the load out whether we are doing a skidding or whether we are doing a trailer load out so like that if it is a skidding then uh, it will have a friction loads and the racking loads all those things if it is a trailer load out it is a differential settlements differential and differential settlements and in elevations and then also the accelerations though it is a very small accidental loads accidental loads are loads which may occur as a result of accident or ex or exceptional circumstances one thing which we have discussed before is a vessel impact vessels may get collided with the jacket while move while coming near to the platform or supplying any equipment or food or anything uh, besides that there will be other accident is the fire accident there may be a chance of fire and because of that also there will be a fire explosion that is a one aspect of the accidental loads another one is a dropped object dropped object means when crane on the platform is working and it is picking up something from the transportation barge and moving on to the and keeping it on to the top sides platform then there may be a chance to drop that one so that is one of the dropped object and uh, another la another last one is unintended flooding like it we have discussed before that the jacket lakes are buoyant so that it will create some negative upward force upward load but if those things will get damaged then uh, if suppose say if it is a small small very small diameter very small size then uh, structurally it may be okay but it causes lot of uh, it causes vertical load increase in vertical load though it is not that significant but it is an that is considered as an accidental load load case special measures are normally taken to reduce this kind of the risks from accidental loads structure installation activities and conditions load out load out is transporting the the entire structure will be fabricated in the fabrication yard which will be transfer which will be transport which will be transferred onto the transportation barge so this process is called as a load out moving the structure from the ground onto the transportation barge is called as a load out there are different ways how to do that load out which will be coming in the next slide and transportation analysis transportation analysis is uh, from fabrication yard and it will be traveling to the site so while going the site the transportation barge will be subjected to the motions so because of this motion accelerations it will generate inertial loads so we need to verify the structure for the transportation loads lift analysis lift analysis is uh, because the loads when we are lifting it we are we will, we will be maximum we will be lifting a single lift single point hook lift or sometimes dual hook lift so the in place condition we have designed for a different load path whereas lifting you are doing it a different load path so that is that is the reason it is very important to do the lift analysis to assess the structural to assess the integrity of the structure and also to select the correct slings to select the correct slings then that is a one of the one of the method insulation is lift analysis the another method is if suppose the jacket weight is too heavy like a lift maximum usually we will go up to 3000 tons maximum 3000 tons usually we will lift the jacket and lower down onto the sea floor to keep on the sea floor but if the jacket is more than 3000 then we usually go with a launch launching that means it will be it will be skidded into the jacket will be skidded into the sea so that the jacket will float again on the water surface then it will be set right in back onto the sea bed by controlled flooding that is launch analysis appending analysis means once after launch then it will be floating onto the floating on the sea water on the sea then it will be appended to vertical position by controlled flooding once it comes to the vertical position then they will they will flood totally so that it will rest on the designated position in a vertical in vertical 
So at that point of the time, we need to verify the structure, whether it is capable to sustain with the wind and wave loads, sorry, wave loads, especially wave and current loads for the operating uh, installation, operating system. Operating system means we know when we are going to install the jacket and uh, we know what is the predicted one year time, predicted uh, max, uh, maximum wave height and uh, current velocities, we will be knowing them. So we, we, we need to design the jacket structure for such kind of the environmental loads. We should, I mean, it is like a gravity based at that point of time. We won't be having any piles. So the jacket, in, the jacket should be stable bearing with respect to bearing and sliding, it should be stable. That is unpiled condition analysis. Then after all these things, the last one is a piling condition. Once the jacket unpiled condition is okay, then we need to drive, we need to drive the piles. So to drive the piles, there will be a sequence. The sequence, the pile, uh, piling condition, pile drivability analysis, which will, from which we will come to know what is the sequence of the piles and what is the maximum length of each pile to be there. Because there are so many aspects like uh, each segment, how much each segment we can handle. If suppose your penetration is 100 meters, we cannot lift 100 meters of the pile and then keep it, uh, send it one at one go. We may have to go 40, 40, 20, something like that. So when you do on one corner, then go to the another corner because, because of the, to maintain the stability also. At the same time, it is also depends, uh, it also, we should also know that what is the self penetration? Once the pile is lowered down, it will go on its own weight, some, some kind of self penetration. That is also an important thing. And one of the, another, another thing what we will be coming out from pile drivability is how many, how many blowdowns is required while driving the piles. Here you can see this uh, jacket blowdown on transport, onto the transportation barge. So in the left hand screen, you can see that it is a dual hook, dual hook, they are uh, transporting, the, they are lifting and uh, keeping it on the transportation part. This, both the cranes are on the yard cranes. <clears throat> From yard, they are transporting, they are keeping it onto the front top of the barge. And the second picture, you can see that it is, a, it has been placed on the top of the jacket. The third one is, uh, first and second is in vertical position and the last two are in the jacket is in sleeping mode. That means these jackets will be, will be most probably it will be launched. It will be launched into the sea. Okay, loadout, what is the different types of loadout analysis is one is a skidding. That means it will be skidded on the rails onto the, onto the transportation bar. So while skidding, we, will, we may not be able to apply the equal loads on either side of the points. So because of that, there will be a difference, differential loadings. So we, I mean, one will be go at one end, we may be having a 60%, another end may be having a 40%. So because of that, there will be a racking loads. And besides that, while we are taking onto the onboard onto the barge, barge also will be moving up and down because of the tights. So because of the tights, it will be moving up and down. So there will be a displacement loads also will be coming in. That also we need to consider. So that is a skidding method of loadout analysis. Another method is a trailer. Trailer method is a trailers will carry the structure and it will go on to the top of the transportation barge and it will wear it down onto the top of the transportation barge. So the loads, what it will be coming here is a displacement loads is a major one and uh, inertial loads, though it is a very not so significant, but inertial loads also. Then, uh, yeah, lift one is, uh, we have discussed just now, lift also is one of the method for the loadout. <clears throat> the, all the three methods when we will use is, it all depends on the limitations like a weight. If the weight is sufficient to handle with the yard cranes, then we will lift and keep it. And if the weight is too heavy, then we will go with the skidding or sometimes if the medium weight, then we will go with the trailers. You can see the trailers on the rightmost picture. Transportation. Once it, is once it is placed on top of barge, then we will be providing some members <coughs> to 
secure the jacket on top of the jacket so that while transporting it will not fall down into the sea or something like that. So that is called as a sea fastening. Fastening we are going to do. You can see in the picture there are some sea fastening uh, members attached. So which is not only for the sea fastening and also the load distribution and the properly distribute the loads onto the transportation barge. So while transporting, so what are all the different loads will be coming in is because of the vessel motions. Vessel motions is six, like a three angular and a three linear. Linear is a sway, surge and heave in all the three directions. And angular accelerations are roll, pitch and yaw. So because of all this motion accelerations, the structure will be subjected to inertial loads combined with the dead loads. So the structure need to be verified for the support conditions of sea fastening, we need to verify the structure integrity. So structure integrity is the one point and then you will get the reactions to design the sea fastenings from this analysis. Offshore lifting, jacket offshore lifting. So jacket offshore lifting times, it is not the, if it is a thousand tons is the, suppose say, jacket weight is a thousand tons, it is not that the sling will slings will see only thousand tons. Because of the because of the sea state, the vessel will be moving because of the vessel accelerations, it mainly because of the heave up and down, so which will create the dynamic loads. So because of the dynamic loads, the weight uh, will be uh, increased onto the hook, like maybe 30% or 40% or maybe 20%, something like that. So the it need to be considered dynamic loads to be considered. And another load case, what need to be considered is the skew loads. All the slings may not be of equal length in manufacturing. So it may be there may be a slight differences. So because of that slight differences, the load distribution may not be same. The hook point will be exactly above the center of gravity of the hook, above the center of gravity of the structure. But if the slings are different, then it will have a the hook point will go into a different point. So that means the COG is shifted. Center of gravity point is, center of gravity and hook point is not aligned. So because of that, there will be some unequal forces. So those forces also need to be considered in the, in the design. So what we will be designing here is, we'll be designing the member stresses and joint stresses. And uh, based on the lift analysis, whatever the sling forces coming out, we will select the sling size and shackles. So that is uh, about the lift analysis. Launching. As I mentioned before, if the jacket weight is too heavy, uh, it is a limitation for the crane of the offshore installation vessel. So the jacket will be launched into the subsea, launched into the sea. You can see in the figures and the various stages how it will be launched. The tip of the transportation barge will have a one uh, triangular form of tip, which will be called as a rocker arm, which will act as the, like a hinge. The jacket will move on to the, while moving, it will go on to the rocker arm. Once the COG passes the hinge point, then it will automatically tilt the rocker arm, entire rocker arm will tilt and then jacket will be slide into the sea. Once it goes into the sea, it will not go and hit the seabed because of the buoyancy. We will be, all the tubulars will have a lot of buoyancy, so it will not go and hit the uh, sea floor and it will not get damaged. So once it is floated, then that is, a, that is a launch. So you can ask me, what is the kind of loading coming here? So here is a loading is, while it is jacket is kidding at the rocker arm, Rocker arm length is, that means entire jacket weight is supported only on some section of the jacket legs. So those with those reactions, the jacket need to be checked. All the members and jacket, all the members and the joints need to be checked for that conditions. So once it is launched, then it will be appended. That means we will be having appending rigs there. Then uh, using the offshore uh, crane, they will append it. In some of the situations, we will design jacket self-appending. That means once it is launched, it will come back to the vertical uh, condition so that you don't need to do this appending, uh, appending operation. So nowadays, everyone is doing that. 
while designing the jacket itself, they will design in such a way that it will be self-appending so that you, can, you no need to do an offshore operation of appending. So this appending operation, once it comes into the vertical position, they will slowly control flooding and onto the legs, onto the, in the jacket legs, so that it will it will be lowered onto the seabed. Jacket, unpiled jacket stability. Unpiled jacket stability is uh, before piling the jacket uh, piles. I mean piles for not everyone. Just the jacket is on the seabed. So at that time, we need to ensure that the jacket is stable with respect to gravity, with respect to bearing and sliding. So what is the lateral loads causing is, again, the wave and current. The gravity is the self weight of the structure. So we need to design the jacket for the bearing and sliding in these conditions. It's, it's uh, while, while doing this, while at this stage, we will be keeping one of our pile also on top of the jacket. That means out of, if suppose a four leg jacket, then one of the pile will be on top of one of the jacket leg. It means the load will be more on one point. So that condition also we need to consider while, while doing this unpiled stability. So once the pile is given into the, below the sea floor, then this case is not, a, is no more uh, applicable. Jacket pile tieability. Jacket pile tieability means you can see this the piles, the piles first segment are, uh, if suppose if it is 100 meters length of pile, let's say we can make it as a three segments, like a first segment is 40 meters and then 40 meters and then 20 meters. Let's say our uh, water depth is say, 25 meters only, that means penetration. Is 75 meters. So when when you drop the 45 meters of the when you drop the first part, first segment, you will be holding the pile on top of the jacket so that you will weld the next segment to the lower segment. Once the welding is complete, then we will lower it down. So once lowered down, it will go on its own for the self penetration. Once self once it is penetrated on its own, then you can see this uh, hydraulic hammer. So this will be engaged on top of the pile, which will, which will uh, be used to drive the pile. It will be it will be hitting the on top of pile number of blow number of blows. So you, this number of blows, how many blows are required, and all those things, we will come to know from the pile drivability analysis for each segment. And also, it will determine what kind of hammer is required. All these things will be coming out from pile reliability analysis besides the self penetration values. In place conditions, we have discussed this before, but uh, in detail now here. This is the in place condition. In place condition means it, uh, it has to take the, all the vertical loads from the top sides, I mean from the deck. So, which will be based on for that, we will design the what is the pile size required. Pile size is basically what is the pile size is required when it when it is below the seabed. How much to to generate uh, to generate the negative skin friction? How what is the diameter required and how many number of piles are required, etc. So the next one is a seismic analysis. Seismic analysis is uh, once it is uh, installed, platform is installed during its life time of the seismic during its lifetime, anytime seismic condition may happen. Seismic is nothing but it's a, it's a movement. It's a, so you need to consider those accelerations. Those with this accelerations, whatever the inertial loads are generating, those inertial loads combined with the gravity loads, we need to verify the structure for seismic conditions. So besides these two analysis, the another important analysis is fatigue analysis. Fatigue analysis is Let's say the platform is uh, design life is 25 to 30 years. In these 25 to 30 years, the platform will be subjected to waves, wave, wave loads many times. It may be a small wave, no need a uh, maximum wave height. Even small waves coming and hitting, and then from the other direction coming and uh, generating the loads on the joints, like it will be, it is a fatigue, like a reversal of, uh, reversal of bending stress. 
So because of that, the joints, the joints means the weld will get, it will get damaged. So that's why the uh, fatigue analysis determines what type of the, what type of the, based on the type of the joint, what type of the uh, welding classification, and what is the life of that, everything will be decided. What is the input required for fatigue analysis is frequency, wave heights and its frequencies, and how much, how many years is the platform to be designed, and then what is the safety factors. So based considering all these things, the fatigue analysis will be performed. This is top sides. What we have discussed so far is all about jacket, jacket within the, uh, within the sea. Now we are talking about top sides. Top sides means which is a four legged or six or eight legged structures, which will be uh, which will be supported on top of ice. These things you can see on the figures, there is a different levels, which will be having uh, hosting many equipments, pipings, electricals, instrumentation cables, electrical cables, everything, all the facilities, including piping, fluid contents, everything. So this structure, entire structure will be fabricated in the fabrication yard. Once it is a fabricated, then it will be loaded out onto the transportation march. So it, it, it depends on what type of uh, deck it is. If it is a simple wellhead platform, then the deck will be very lighter. If it is a process platform, then the weight will be heavier. Like uh, it will go up to 16 to 20,000 also. 16 to 20,000 tons also, the, it will go up to 20,000 tons. But if it is a wellhead platform, it may be up to 1,000 tons also. Depends. Depends on the facilities what we have designed for that. So the loadout is a similar like jacket only. It will be by three methods, skidding and by trailers and by lift. Normally lift is a very difficult for uh, unsure for uh, top sides. So usually we go by skidding or by trailers for the top sides. And transportation. Transportation again is the same as jacket, only the configuration uh, is, it is like this. And it will be inertial loads due to the transportation vessel in all the uh, due to the vessel motions like a roll, pitch, yarns, linear undulations like a swage, urgent heave. And design input is a uh, design the sea fastenings and the gauges, etc. What is the total vertical load coming on to on the each leg? And whether the barge is sufficient to take that load, or do we require any grillage on the barge? And then what is the lateral loads coming from the with because of this inertial loads? Then whatever the sea fastening side members, whatever we keep it. What is the force uh, forces to be considered while designing these sea fasting members? So all this input will be coming out from this transportation loads, transportation analysis, besides the structural integrity. Lift analysis. Lift analysis is a similar jacket lift analysis and top sets lift analysis is also similar. Again, the limitation on the weight, maximum uh, top sets lift weight depends on uh, contractor's vessel. Uh, capabilities, limitations, but, but uh, usually up to 2,500 pounds, they will go for a lifted object. And if it is a more than more than 3,000 tons, then they will split the entire deck maybe into two segments, like two floors. One is called as a support module supporting frame. The entire deck will be divided into two or three components called as a modules. They will fabricate separately. And then they will prepare a big platform, only just a platform. First, they will install the, that top side frame, which is called as a module supporting frame, MSF. And then over that, they will place all the modules next to each other. And then they will uh, do all the interfaces between the modules. And then they will do the commissioning. So this is about the lift analysis. This is a float over analysis. Float over analysis is if the weight is, uh, say it's 20,000 tons, you can, it's, we cannot lift that uh, 20,000 tons, any offshore cranes. So what we will do is, this is, uh, it will be transported on the vessel, and uh, the vessel will go, you can see that there are two structures. It is not the two structures actually, it is a one structure only. But you have a start opening in between so that the transportation vessel will come in between the two tower, two frames, and then 
the transportation vessel will be ballasted. Ballasted in the sense it will be flooded with the water more in the tanks. So once it is flooded, the deck will be, the top sides will be lowered down. So once it is lowered, it will come and sit on top of the jacket legs. So it's uh, the ballasting will first, once it enters into the slot, then they will align it. Once the align, then they will do the moorings. They will, I mean, the barge movements will be controlled with the moorings and then they will start the ballasting. Rapid ballasting they will do. Rapid ballasting in the sense they, they don't just uh, send the, uh, flood the tanks with the small pumps or something like that. They will be having some chambers which just they open it and then entire water will go in and then all of a sudden it goes down and then the top sides will settle on top, uh, supports on top of the jacket. Top sites in service analysis. Top sites uh, in service analysis. This, again, as I mentioned before, in place analysis and seismic analysis. But wave loads we will be considering on the jacket only. But because of the wave loads, what, uh, whatever the deflections will come into the, we, what is, uh, we will be having a single model, single analysis model with the jacket and top sites. Because if we can, if we do the only top sites analysis, then you will, we will not be able to capture the jacket movements because of these wave loads. So we will be considering the jacket uh, deflections also into the analysis in the in-service analysis of top sites. In the top sites uh, in-service analysis, major things is the uh, dead weights, live loads. These two are the major loads. Besides that, wind loads. These three are the major loads. And seismic also will be governing because seismic, why it is governing is all the top sites is having a huge mass of equipments like any equipment, some, some equipments may be ranging up to 500 tons also. So that will have a center of gravity at some higher point, which will create a lot of inertial loads on its supports on the deck. So those all those equipment supports need to be designed for seismic condition as well. So this is about the top sites in service analysis. So friends, this is uh, end of my discussion and if you have any questions please do comment in this comment box over to you mr pitish sir thank you so much for this uh, excellent and knowledgeable session sir i hope this session will be helpful for all the engineers who are willing to pursue their career in offshore structures. So next, moving on to our questionnaire session, sir. We have some questions from the participants. I just want to say I mean, my thanks to Gates Management for giving me an opportunity to this. And, a special, uh, and also special thanks to my professor, Dr. Sudarshan Rao, who encouraged me to give such kind of uh, introduction sessions. And also to my friend, Mr. Dr. Dr. Venkat Reddy. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. And we're also very much delighted to have you here for today's FTP. Uh, so now we have some questions from the participants, sir. I would like to, uh, I would like to put these questions in front of you. Sure. Uh, so uh, the first question is, uh, are the offshore structures economical or not from Sri Ram? Offshore structures is economical in the sense, see, if the water, it, it all depends on up in uh, what water depth you are going to, your oil reservoirs are there. If suppose your oil reservoirs, oil wells, is in the water depth of up to 120 meters, you will go with this fixed, fixed offshore structures. If, if your wells are exactly underneath the, at one location only, then this is a feasible. Suppose if your wells is a bit far, like a, each well is, you have a 20 wells, but each well is scattered, like each well is scattered around one kilometer, two kilometers, something like that. Then you cannot build 20 offshore platforms. So in such case, what we will do is, we will we will be having a well uh, Christmas trees at individual well tree locations. And then all this, all the uh, oil and gas will be collected from those wells and it will be transported to the platforms through the pipelines. Yes, feasibility, any project, before doing into the execute any project, they will do all the feasibilities. Operator will do all the feasibilities 
with respect to market prices, market demands, and worst scenarios, and what is the amount capex, capital investment, what is the returns. So based on that, only these decisions will be coming out. I hope I answered your question. Thank you, sir. Uh, the second question is, what is the Bureau of Indian Standard Code of Practice for the design of offshore structures? We don't have any Indian standard for the design of offshore structures. Uh, Indian, I mean, our uh, Indian oil companies like uh, ONGC, Reliance, they, they also use all these international standards only, American Petroleum Institute standards and NARSO standards, ISO standards, DNV guidelines, AIC, all these things. Indian uh, standards we don't have yet, one of these. but they are under uh, working, uh, I mean, they are working on it. Thank you, sir. Uh, the next question is from Muhammad Rafiq. What is the method to protect offshore concrete from marine environment? Okay, whatever we have discussed today is all, all, all steel structures. First, I will answer the one, though, it, though the question is not to this one. Let me tell about this because I didn't tell about this. So offshore structures, how we will protect from corrosion is, we will be having a sacrificial aluminum anodes attached to the jacket. So which will, uh, they will get corroded, self-corroded. So they will get corroded, but they will not let steel get corroded. So the number of anodes, will be designed based on number of years of the service life. So that is about the steel structures. When it comes to the uh, concrete structures, we do not have any in, I mean, in India, we do not have it, but in other places, we do have a concrete gravity based structures. Concrete gravity based structures for corrosion it will be in the mix of concrete, it will be considered in the design. But nowadays, no one is going with the concrete gravity based structures at least in the last 10, 15 years, I would say it is a one percentage of the pro, um, fixed platforms are concrete gravity based. But yes, they will be controlled with the concrete, uh, with the admixtures in the concrete. Thank you, sir. Uh, the next question is from Syed Ejaz Ahmed. What is the uniform depth of pile foundation? Sorry, can you please come again? What is the uniform depth of pile foundation? Yeah, with pile depth, pile penetration, and pile size, it depends on the top side's loading. Loading. What is the top side's loading? Whether it is a thousand tons or ten thousand tons. Okay, that is the first fact. Uh, first, uh, first thing to be considered. Second thing is, besides that, then what is the type of soil you where you are? Is it it is a silty clay or it is a hard? or it is a sandy, it all depends on these three, uh, these two things. If it is a, if it is a combination of silt and uh, sand, then it's a, it, it all depends on the, the uh, pile diameter, depends on the total weight of the, total weight what you need to transfer onto the, uh, into the sea, onto, sorry, onto the seabed. It all, uh, if you have a more diameter, that means you have a more, circumferential area that means you will be generating more negative skin friction so based on that the pile size will be selected if you have a smaller diameter then you will have a smaller area and smaller resistance if you, if you need more area means you have to increase the pile diameter or number of piles or pile penetration sometimes pile penetration you may not be able to increase because you, it is a very difficult to drive also so in such cases they will add the additional piles rather going with the both penetration thank you sir uh, the next question is from tejas rati what kind of protective technique is used for protecting structural elements from weathering action yeah, weathering action, these two things. First one, I think uh, the inside the subsea, the, because of the corrosion, I have answered just, uh, just before. And uh, the top side's deck facilities will be painted with the offshore coating, marine epoxy coating. And over that, uh, 
it will be regularly periodically maintained periodically maintained and maintenance will be also going going on so that they will ensure that there is no corrosion on that so is that the question is that answer answers my uh, i mean question weathering protections you asked so weathering is uh, corrosion i consider and corrosion top sides corrosion will be controlled using the coating marine epoxy coating thank you sir uh, next question is from srinivas what is the biggest oil rig in the world and what is its capacity to extract the oil uh, sorry srinivas uh, oil rigs i do not have much of info oil rigs i do not have much of Maybe I will get back to you later in uh, comments. Yes, uh, so the next question is from Shreyas: How the elements are to be designed? Okay, the elements. Uh, uh, how the elements will be designed is like members are joints. We will be modeling the jacket structure and along with the top sides in a computer software, and then it is a uh, nothing but any any analysis is a stiffness analysis. we will be doing a stiffness analysis with all the loads combination of all the loads and boundary conditions etc and then from the analysis you will come to know the member forces and based on the member forces you will be designing a tubulars if it is a tubular you will be designing based on api rp2 american petroleum institute recommended practice 2a so based on api rp2 a working stress method we are using it but we can do that lrft also based on the working stress method or lrft method we will use the api standards and for tubulars we use the aisc american institute of steel construction and for joints is a aisc based on the, for uh, for hybrid joints hybrid joints means beam to beam top sides those will be designed based on aisc whereas tubular to tubular connection will be designed using the api tubular to tubular is a different it will be punching shear it will be designed for punching shear using api recommendations thank you sir uh, the next question is from mohammad ali what is the maximum weight of jacket generally used again it's a question what is that like the range i can say that it's even i have seen a jackets of 600 tons also and i have seen some jackets of 10000 tons also. it all depends on what facilities it is it is supported it all depends on the water depth because if if it is a shallow water depth if it is a 15 meters of water depth then your steel frame is a very smaller and if if the top sides is also very less weight then it it's a entire thing it, it will come as a small you require a smaller uh, jacket only but if the water depth is higher let's say 150 meters and if your top sides is having a huge mass of 10000 or 20000 something like that then you may be going with the eight leg structures with a big big uh, space frame with all those things so it all depends on the total top sides weight and ja water depth also the environmental loads because it has to resist the environmental loads okay thank you sir uh, the next question is what kind of maintenance is required to maintain structural integrity and stability from tejas rati sorry what is that question can you please come again can you please come again question mr ritesh yes sir what kind of maintenance is required to maintain structural integrity and stability okay the structural integrity wise there will be uh, once the structure is designed there will be a set of one document will be prepared inspection inspection maintenance and repo, uh, repair IMR inspection, maintenance, and repair. So, as suggested in the in that uh, report, they will be doing periodical uh, checkings, like uh, once in two years or once in three years, something like that. They will be going across the identified joints, critical joints, which we will be identified in the design phase. Diver will be going inside the subsea, and then he will be verifying those joints. Okay, the reports it will be he will. Uh, will be taking a video from there 
and which will be reviewed further to see if there is any cracks developed in the welds something like that it it is one more thing is that uh, they will also check if there is any damage to any tubulars or something like that and another thing is this marine growth marine growth is also they will try to reduce the marine growth especially in the splash zones they will provide some uh, marine growth preventers which will be moving up and down due to the movement of due to the wave loads and uh, due to the waves and uh, splash zone at the splash zone so the marine growth preventer moving up and down so that it will crush the marine growth thank you sir and uh, we have a last question from mr kalyan kumar which type of mooring has been used in offshore structures there's no mooring actually for offshore because this fixed offshore platforms are fixed to the seabed through the piles but yes if you are talking about the mooring other platforms like a tension leg platforms or fps floating uh, production systems production systems or the uh, yeah, tlp i told these things will be anchored to the seabed so it is a, like a tethers set of tethers which will be holding down the top sides top sides will be floating on the water uh, water level and that will be hold down till to the seabed with the anchored piles with the tethers Uh, sorry sir uh, we have one last question yeah sure uh, from sinivas murthy what course should we study at graduation or pg level uh, in detail about the offshore offshore structures graduation is uh, there is no specialization in india at least in graduation graduation is civil engineering only but specialization if you would like to then uh, there are some couple of you know uh, like madras iit is having a ocean engineering and uh, madras iit is having and uh, iit bombay is also offering some courses in uh, marine structures nit suratkal and calicut they are offering some post graduation courses but graduation is a must for a first we need to be a structural civil engineer then only followed uh, will be going into the specialization thank you sir uh, now we have finished the questionnaire session uh, on behalf of civil engineering department and uh, gates institute of technology i would like to thanks for your valuable time and the presentation sir so before concluding the session i would like to hand over the session to my colleague for the word of thanks thank you jai hind thanks for the wonderful session today session was informative and knowledgeable we look forward for more sessions with you sir so finally vote of thanks good afternoon all i feel privileged on this occasion to deliver my vote of thanks for the second day of fdp on emerging trends in civil engineering firstly i would like to convey our sincere thanks to today's research person Sri Pri Srinivasulu Garu, I would like to convey my special thanks to our correspondent, Madam Sri Mathi V K Padmavati Amma Garu, Managing Director Sri G Raghunath Reddy Garu, Director, Madam Sri Mathi V K Sri Vani Garu, and our Principal Sir, Doctor B Baskar Patel, for their motivation, support, and encouragement. I would like. to heartful thanks to my fellow faculty members who have been supporting me in all tasks for organizing this fdp last but not least i thank all the participants throughout the country and across the globe for your time and patience in making second day of fdp a grand success we wish your presence for the tomorrow session now we are closing the session on count 5 Five, four, three, 
டூ ஒன்